Hi everyone, this is Father Michael, and I want to speak to you a little bit about the wonderful gift and blessings of what we call at Ablaze, the Hidden Lambs. And we just finished our Life in the Spirit seminar just this last Friday, and it was an awesome experience of allowing God's Spirit to fall down upon us and to inflame our hearts with fire and love. And I'd like to read to you a scripture from Matthew's Gospel. And in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 11, it says that Jesus will baptize with fire. And this is what a blaze is about. It's about experiencing Jesus praying over you through the deacons and priests that went about the room and prayed with you. And it says here in, John, or in Matthew 3.11, I indeed baptize you with water because of repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandal I am not worthy or fit to take off or carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So this baptism by fire, this release of the gifts and graces that you and I have received through baptism and confirmation is precisely what is the power, what is the zeal, what is the desire in us, the desire of Jesus in us to go out and to want to serve and to want to love and to want to forgive and to want to bring the forgiveness of sins into the world. So we know that our ablaze scripture is Luke 12 49 which kind of goes right along with Matthew 3 11. It says, I have come to cast fire upon the earth, and how I wish that it were already ablaze. So the Lord's desire is again to set us ablaze. And how does He do that? He comes, as it says in Matthew 3.11, to baptize us with fire. So again, when you are prayed with, or if you haven't been prayed with, we'd be glad to pray with you. When you're prayed over and prayed with, what you received in your baptism and confirmation begins to be released. It's kind of like, imagine your heart like a furnace of charity. And those flames of charity were placed in there at baptism and confirmation, specifically, when you receive these sacraments. When you're prayed with, it's kind of like you choose to open the door of your heart and let that flame not just hide in your heart, but to become a public flame, to become a flame that's revealed through your way you teach, the way you speak, the way you dress, the way you act, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you shop, what you listen to, what you don't listen to. Again, this flame starts to affect you. And I spoke with somebody that was prayed over um, this last uh, night when we had to pray over for a blaze. And one of the things they said, people at work started to recognize that there's something different about them. So it's not always that you have to tell somebody. It might be more just your presence. You carry a joy about you. You know, the joy of the Lord's our strength. You can't really mimic authentic joy, right? You know, when somebody's being artificially joyful, it's clear. Any one of us could pick that up. But when someone has an authentic joy about them and a peace about them, it's kind of like they glow. You know, we can kind of like be glow for Jesus. We, we glow with the Lord's love for us. And that shows through the way we look at people, the way we listen, the way we talk. So these are all ways that this fire... This baptism by fire, which is this release of our baptism and confirmation graces, begins to affect and influence ourselves and our everyday life of everyone we meet. And so the hidden lambs, what does it mean to be a hidden lamb? To be a hidden lamb is to allow Jesus to continue to take away the sins of the world. And I want to read to you John chapter 1 verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming to him and said, Look, there is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Look, there's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. You and I should be able to look like John the Baptist did. We should be able to look and recognize in each other the Lamb of God. Because if you're a Christian, if you really understand what it means to be baptized and confirmed, then you understand that you are no longer your own, that you've been purchased by the price of His holy blood and His offering on the cross, and that that purchase of your soul and mine in us by the blood of Jesus our Lord has given us access to the Holy Spirit, 
has given us access to the Father's heart. So the Holy Spirit in you and I forms the Lamb within us. Just as Mary was conceived, received, and nurtured the Lamb within her and, and brought Him forth into the world, so you and I must receive, conceive, and nurture the Lamb within us and allow Him to be brought out into the world. So Jesus lives in you and lives in me. To be baptized with fire in the Holy Spirit. The whole point of life in the Spirit is so that you and I can begin to become more sensitive and aware that Jesus the Lamb lives in us. Behold, right? Behold, look. Behold, there is the Lamb of God. What's He do? This is where the hidden Lamb ministry comes in. What does the Lamb do? It takes away the sins of the world. So you and I are called to take away the sins of the world. How do we do that? Okay, we must allow the grace of God, the Spirit of God within us, to let Jesus continue to live His ministry and His mission of taking away sin. How do we do that again? We listen. A huge part of being a hidden lamb, of letting the lamb who is hidden within each human being that's baptized and confirmed, the lamb living within you, hiding within you, is listening to Him. Lord Jesus, how do you want to pray? Because see, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to recognize people around you that need prayer. You're going to recognize people hurting because you're not thinking about yourself anymore. See, when God's thinking about you, you don't have to think about yourself. You're free to think about others. So being a hidden lamb is someone that has eyes of Jesus to see the needs of the brothers and sisters around them. And not just these physical eyes, but spiritual eyes. When you're in your quiet prayer time before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, as a hidden lamb, what might you be listening for? Lord, teach me how to pray for a blaze this next round. How do we want me to pray for the next ablaze night? And the Lord might put on your spiritual eyes and spiritual ears or your heart a sense of praying for people that suffer from depression. And another hidden lamb might be asked to pray for the, the, the music ministry, that they have unity, that they have the ability to lead the people in worship. And another hidden lamb might be asked to pray for someone who suffers from an addiction um, or someone that's suffering in a troubled marriage or someone that has trouble with their children not attending church and they're far from the faith. See, the Lord's going to put on each hidden lamb's heart what He's asking each person to pray for. But that means you're going to choose to love as a hidden lamb. And when you choose to love, you're going to feel pain because it brings us right to the heart of our faith, which is the Mass. You are living the Mass as a hidden lamb. Jesus is hidden in the host and in the wine. You don't see... You, we see bread and wine, right? We see the, the, the outward signs of appearance of bread and wine. But we know through faith that it's not bread and wine, that it's transformed through the Holy Spirit into what? Not into what, but into who? It's transformed into the body of Christ, the Lamb of God. Behold, we hold up the host, right, as a priest. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. So you're being called to communion with Jesus within you as He lives through you the mission of saving souls, of taking away sin. So how's God going to invite you to take away sin? Well, that's between you and the Lord in your personal prayer time. And as you learn to sit in quiet prayer and listen to how Jesus is inviting you to intercede, specifically as hidden lambs for a blaze, we're asking you to pray for and listen for how God might be asking you to intercede for a particular area or person's um, or whatever it be for a blaze. It might be for the president. It might be for the nation. It might be for Japan. It might be for India, Africa. Whatever it be. God's going to put it on your heart, but you've got to listen as a lamb, right? You've got to pay attention to the lamb within you as he's growing, as he's speaking to you, as he's asking you to offer your life. And so, what we do in hidden lambs, we, no one knows who the hidden lambs are. So number one, you and I will not know who the hidden lambs are. Um, well, I, I will, I guess, because I'm in charge. <laughs> but people won't know in general. We don't want this to be like, hey, I'm a hidden lamb. Look at me. Woe is me. I'm a, I'm a hidden lamb. Praise God. No, it's a hidden ministry. It's a humble, hidden work. That's what makes it powerful. Satan likes show. He likes to, to be number one. He likes to be on stage. He likes to put on a show. Jesus was very humble. For 33 years... 
he was hidden in Nazareth. Only three years were public of his ministry. So a lot of the work of Christians is hidden. Within my soul, the Lamb lives his mission. So you pick one day a week where you offer some form of prayer and sacrifice for the ablaze night that's coming in the next ablaze evening that's approaching. And that might be offering a chaplet of mercy, a holy hour coming to Mass, um, doing some act of kindness or service. Um, it might mean offering up a headache, a, a smashed pinky toe. It might mean um, spending uh, an extra moment in prayer um, at some point during your day, um, speaking a kind word to a person you don't like. See, whatever it be, it's taking away sin, letting Jesus live through you. And so... I'd like to close with this scripture from 1 Colossians 24. Colossians 1, 24. Even now I rejoice in the midst of my sufferings on your behalf. See, there's the hidden lamb. I'm rejoicing in my sufferings on your behalf. And in my own person, I'm making up. So in me, I'm making up what is still lacking and remains to be completed of, the affli of Christ's afflictions for the sake of His body, the church. So I, through my sufferings, joined to Jesus, make up what is lacking in the body of Christ. Meaning there are people who don't know the Lord. And if you know the Lord, it's your and I responsibility to let Jesus the Lamb live through us so that he can receive, we can receive love and that love will flow out to those parts of the church and the body of Christ that are sick and blocked with sin. So as a hidden limb, know that you might feel a heaviness and a burden. You might feel that depression. You might feel that fatigue. You might feel irritable one day and not even know why. Well, God might be inviting you to intercede for those who are living in sin. Feeling, and not just feeling angry, but live angry. People that not just feel unforgiveness, but live unforgiveness. People that live bitter lives. People that are miserable and, and, and are attacking and destroying marriage and family and relationships. You and I must let Jesus go to the cross through us. This is what it means to live the redemptive mission of Christ. So that all might have life and have it to the full. So, my prayers are with you. If you're interested in this Hidden Lamb ministry, please send us... Um, a contact email form. You can go to the website and basically just go to the contact section and send us and say, yes, I want to be a hidden lamb. Because we've noticed in this ministry when we started it that the ablaze nights have changed. The more hidden lambs we have, the more of heaven's rain is going to fall into the ablaze nights. And then the people you and I invite to ablaze, when they come, they'll be soaked with the fire of God's love and they'll leave differently and then they'll go out and set others on fire so let's set the world ablaze by letting Jesus the Lamb who's hidden within us live his mission let's give our yes like Mary did and so may Almighty God bless you the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen